Hi everyone, today is April 11th, 2020, and this is the Duel Assessment, your podcast for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. My name is Green Ranger. Big news this week, and somewhat depressing news in the prospects of the game. WCS 2020 has been officially cancelled. They made this decision a few days ago, um, earlier in the week, and um, we'll talk about the implications of that, and... Um, Kind of goes along with the podcast question of the week. Should Konami hold the WCS 2020 digitally? We'll have the responses from everyone who responded there. Um, The KC Cup is going on, though, despite this. Um, We'll talk about whether it matters or not. But that's the main thing going on this week. We have some tournament decks that kind of go around what you'll be playing. And to change it up, I have my Green Rangers April 2020 Casey Cup tier list of salt. Um, I think the Casey Cup always riles me every time I do play it. It's an agony um, playing a game, but that's what it is. And go through my tier list of all the decks you'll see and how much they tick me off. Also talk about a few other um, new cards this week. Um, Rank duels update. Pick a gift. Pick a gift. We won't get all the cards this week. We might get some next week. And that'll be it. So my week in the dual world, I'm currently getting through stage two of the Kaiba Cup. Got through stage one. I think I got to DLV 15 with pure light swords with no skill or restart. I was just trying to level up Carly. That's what it was. And then um, it was a bit of a struggle. 17, 18. I'd say that's where it was the toughest. And then I decided to play Monarchs. I think I was doing that with the Invoked Magician Girl deck. It didn't really work out, but all my Invoked decks suck. It's the moral of the story. I went to Baggy Sleeves Monarchs, and I got through Stage 1. That's my, that's my Stage 2 deck. I was actually on a really hot streak for a while. Um, and then I started losing a lot more games, so I'm you know playing at my 50% now. A few thousand DP. Let's talk about Monarchs just for a little bit in case you're unfamiliar. Playing, playing Baggy Sleeves because you have all these level 5s and hires. And you'll, that, sometimes they'll just be destroyed. And you'll draw cards. And this deck, what this deck excels at is having multiple plays in a turn. You've got cards like the new Blue Eyes Synchro the um, Magician's Navigation, the um, No Mortal Can Resist. There's a lot of plays that can lock out your graveyard. So you have these cards that have multiple effects in the graveyard. The Monarchs are trap monsters, so they play around No Mortal Can Resist to some extent. You lose you lose your Plague Spreaders, you lose your Raidens, uh, Kite Roids, you lose those in the graveyard, your Bacon Saver, sure. But your level 5, the Prime Monarch. I don't know the names of these cards, frankly. It's the white one and the black one. That's how I know it. Prime Monarch and First Monarch. Prime Monarch comes out as a level 5. And that's great because your level 2 Synchro Summon can work with it. Your level 4 Synchro Summon can work with it. So it's flexible with your whatever card you're playing in your Synchro deck. Now the Prime, the First Monarch is more of a skillful play. This is a card that you primarily would banish to get the Prime Monarch out, but it itself is the tribute summon cost for Erebus. Erebus, the Underworld Monarch. And um, one of the things you do is you kind of get hit around and you special summon it from the trap zone as a trap monster. And then you declare Dark. You could toss another card out as well. And then you play Erebus to summon it. And then you get rid of a card in your opponent's hand, a field, or a graveyard. Typically, um, it's from the hand. You have to cost some of your Monarch cards to, to do that, but it plays around some of the hand traps. You got your Light Sworn Package, three charges, one Solar Recharge, three Lumina, three Raiden. Lumina and Raiden, of course, are the core um, cards you would use for Synchro Summoning. Um, now, with Plague Spreader, you could do a Killer Play... You have in the graveyard Lumina, get Raiden out, and then you get Plague Spreader, level 9 Synchro Summon to Crystron Quadrant Gandrix, which 
it's pretty much the best card in this deck, but and you play, you pretty much always win because you banish three of your opponent's cards. It's pretty good. And then you get to steal the card when it gets destroyed. So against a blue eyes deck, it's pretty good. Uh, otherwise, Vermilion Dragon Mech, if you're level nine plays. Michael, level seven. Black Rose Dragon is very useful in this deck. Great to get it out with um, Prime Monarch and Plague Spreader. Fortune Lady Every against um, you know decks that need untargetable banishing. That's a lot of them. And Samurai Destroyer is kind of the filler. Level 7. Um, yeah, not much else to say about this deck. Um, it excels at getting multiple plays a turn. Sometimes you play Lumina to deke out their, their Floodgate or whatever. And then you could just pop out I Monarch and Plague Spreader as your level seven Synchro Summons. So that's what that's what the deck does well at. Of course, it's weak against graveyard effects. No mortal can resist. Does kill the deck a bit, but um, sometimes you can't play around it with the monarchs who don't get hit by that spell. So, uh, anyways, that is my deck. Let's see the official esports. Duel Links Meta MCS twenty nine happened exactly last week. I think last month uh, Saturday. First place, Simon, Level, Augmentation, Shirinui. This is pretty much the, the main uh, Shirinui deck. You do see a lot of No Mortal Can Resist, but Level, Aug has helped them a lot. Um, basically skipping their Level 6 play and getting straight to Level 8 and Level 10. Um, what what Shirinui always has done well in this 20-card version since they've moved on from the Grass version is having a very lean core. They need very few cards to get the core going, this one doesn't even run Gold Sarcophagus for that matter. Three Solitaires, three Squires, one Spirit Master, and two of the level two uh, Shirinoi Spectral Sword. The rest of the cards are tech cards. Two Artifacts, one Cosmic, two Ballista Squad, three Phoenix Chain, two Floodgates, one Karma Cut. They've become a really heavy control deck, um, similar to um, Invoke decks. They just they don't need much of a core. Your best control trap cards will do. Second place, Choo Choo Motherfucker, Baggy Sleeves, Light Sworn Thunder Dragon. It's kind of a kind of like the um, the darling of the MCS is whether Thunder Dragons can hit a really high level. I think they will. They will get a pretty top spot, maybe even the first spot. It never seems to be the main meta deck, but we'll see. And not a big light sworn engine, just two Raidens and three charges. It seems like Thunder Dragons don't need Lumina to get things going. They have a glow up bulb and a jet synchron for those level one plays. Um, that goes along well. It lets them use Brionic as a level six because they do pack some level five monsters in, and then it lets them do level sevens and level eights as well. It's a very flexible synchro deck. I think we saw them use Plague Spreader for a bit, but I guess the level 1s are better than the level 2 tuners. Up 4, Andy Sang, No Immortal Can Resist, Dark Magician. This is kind of like the older, slightly older Dark Magician deck. Banish Protection, 1 Kaiku, and 1 Knight Ends Destroyer, Sorcerer. That's what that means. Otherwise, a very standard deck. He, he does run 2 Cosmic Cyclones, which is interesting, because that's a card that's limited at 3, and he decided that 2 was the right amount. With no mortal can resist, you got you have to figure out what, how often you need to trigger that skill, um, and how many cosmic cyclones is too many. There's probably a dead one, so that's why you figure it out. And psycho P, destiny draw element saber invoked, uh, typical big, um, big element saber deck. Two mirror walls help you lose life points for destiny draw. Definitely good. Three Finnish Chains, three Floodgates. Lapoya, Element Saber Lapoya is one of my favorite uh, ones to play when I did play Element Sabers. Um, you know, I always lost with him because he only had 400 attack and I'll just attack, play him in attack mode, but um, very good in this control meta that we have. Not control meta, but he stops all those annoying spells. Let's move on to the next one, Duel Links Meta Weekly 118. Harry A, Alternative Evolution Blue Eyes. Very typical deck that you see. Um, two Maidens, 
three white stones, one dragon spear of white, three sage, two blue eyes, two cards of consonants, two field spell mausoleum of white, two Rageki break, one karma cut, uh, two Kribos is interesting. I'm not sure if it's a standard thing in blue eyes. I haven't seen a ton against blue eyes. Typically, you beat them, you beat them. They don't have a Kribo, but nice surprise. Second place, Gustavo, Grit Hero Deck. The Hero Deck has um, a new component. Not a new component, but an extra tool. Destiny Hero Plasma. Kind of a closer against all of those card effects that they have. Um, anyone has. Two Blue Hey True Nades, so that's something you have to look out for when you're playing in the Kaiba Cup. If you're playing a deck, they seem ready, loaded for for Bear, and you have a board... Or they might play anti magic arrows or hey true nade or something, so look out for those cards. Up four Genkai Tuna level Og Shirnoi, similar deck to the one we saw in the first tournament. A lot of control heavy stuff. Three Ballista Squad, three Phoenix Chain, two Floodgates, and the same very lean core. No gold, no gold sarcophagus needed anymore. Top four Mongrel Alternative Evolution Blue Eyes. A little different take here. Some of the chaos stuff going on with chaos dragon Levianir. Otherwise, pretty much the same stuff. No maidens in this deck. On two Cosmo brains. Uh, otherwise, pretty much the same. A melody of awakening dragon works with. Um, sometimes you see judgment dragon in the decks. It works for chaos dragon Levianir and for blue eyes uh, monsters as well. Finally, battle phase forty seven. First place, Hexy, Shadow Game, Stromberg deck. Uh, pretty much the typical Stromberg deck you see with some of the techs. Three Artifact Lancia, three Forbidden Chalice, three Floodgates. Otherwise, the core of Stromberg, um, you've got the Princess, the Princess Carriage, three of the Field Spell, Glass Slippers, that's your direct attacker, three Glyphs to tutor the Field Spell, destroy back row, three Psychic Wielders, two Sangan, one Lava Golem, Yep, that's the deck. Oh yeah, three Gren Maju the Azar. Oh, don't forget about that card. Second place Kuroto Destiny Draw uh Invoked Element Saber. It's very spicy deck here. Yeah, you your regular Element Saber cards. Lapoya is back instead of Nalu. Otherwise, um three Fiendish Chain, three Floodgate, um Fusion Reserve has been pretty staple in Element Sabres. Then you got some spicy cards here. The Transmigration pot Prophecy. Target two cards in the graveyard. Shuffle those into the deck. So, drop card here. Counters. Those graveyard effects, when they're trying to do something, you send them back to the deck. Pretty cool. I think I have some of these too, but I've never used the card. And two Void Trap Holes. When your opponent special summons a monster with 2,000 or more attack, negate the effects of one of those monsters with 2,000 or more attack, and if you do, destroy it. So this is kind of like a... Negate and destroy card. And, um, you know, negate and destroy cards are pretty strong. Divine Wrath. Um, Ultimate Providence are pretty good in the Kyber Cup right now. I've been beat many times by those cards. Um, this is a similar card, except it doesn't cost you a card. And Special Summon a Monster of 2000 or more attack. That's almost every single deck has that. So, very good card. These other alternative trap holes, Void Trap Hole, Network Trap Hole, are cards that I've always liked playing. I've always liked Network better because I got it out of a selection box really early and I felt special just playing Network Trap Hole. But um, those are cards that could be sneaky good against certain metas. So if you have those extra trap holes, um, you could consider plugging them in. Void Trap Hole seems good in this meta. Third place, Horn, Baggy Sleeves. Um, Light Sworn Thunder Dragons, very similar deck to the one we saw before. Uh, you have your core cards here, uh, Glow Up Bulb and Jet Synchron. This one has a fewer Thunder Dragons. The the one before had more monsters. This one only has like two ofs instead. Still running Raiden and No Lumina though. It's a similar situation there. And uh, third place Magno Baggy Sleeves. Thunder Dragons, same deck as the one before, except it packs Artifact Lancia. That's a pretty good card if you do have it against this meta. 
And KC Cup tier list update. There's a new top player council in Duel Links meta. So some of the uh, tiers have been readjusted. I do agree with a lot of these moves. Element Sabres tier 1. Shiranui has been moved up tier 1. These two decks have kind of become like the best decks with a lot of space to put your best control trap cards in. And, you know, you adjust, you adjust what the best ones are for the meta, but typically... You have your best cards, Phoenix Chains, Bloodgates, you know. Shirinui is going to run Ballista Squad. Element Saber is going to run Fusion Reserve. There's different there's different cards you run with the decks. Element Sabers have to run their field spell, of course, as well. So Element Sabers tend to have less space than Shirinui's do. There's less freedom in it, but they're a stronger deck uh, late game, I think. Tier 2 is a little messy. We've got Dark Magician's been moved up. And then three three decks have been dropped from tier one to tier two as per this top player council. Thunder Dragons, Crystrons, and Blue Eyes. I do agree. Um Blue Eyes is one that's kind of like a tier one and a half in my opinion. It's kind of they've got a million plays now, so I I don't really know about Blue Eyes, but Crystrons and Thunder Dragons for sure. Crystrons just due to sheer value. I mean sh- sheer frequency. You don't see the deck a lot. It's pretty good, but you never see it a ton. Thunder Dragons are kind of based off Mill in the Graveyard. There's always limitations on how good that is, in my opinion, from what I've done myself. Tier 3, we've got four decks as well. Black Wings, Dark Lords, Masked Heroes, and Cyber Dragons. Um, Cyber Dragons are kind of in the same boat as Luna Light, so I think those should go together. Dark Lords, I haven't even seen a Dark Lord deck. Stage 1, I haven't seen one. Stage 2, I haven't seen one, so I don't know where those are. That is it for esports. Let's move on to the next item. My April 2020 KC Cup tier list of salt. I think it's hard to say how well um, really good players control themselves, their own emotions when playing this game. But I, dating back to my time as a Hearthstone player, I completely hated how I would lose to some random thing that just happened. I know that was the appeal of Hearthstone, to have some random thing that happened be really cool, but I saw that as a lack of skill, and sometimes I see that in Duel Links, that's a thing that just manifests in my head, and then I have to stop playing. If I keep playing, I go into losing streaks like last night when I lost like four in a row to to plummet my DP, but um, certain decks just irk me more than others, and... That's how I made this tier list. I kind of judged it off that. Tier 1 I call completely brainless wins. These decks, like anyone can play them. Like they just, they play themselves. And some of these are not the best decks. Some of them are good. So we'll see where go- what goes where. Tier 2 I say annoying as hell. They mean you need a limit. Of course some of these decks have been limited already. That kind of goes into the irrational thinking of what this tier list is all about but it's all about playing off emotion these are pretty good decks they're not brainless but you know they may need a limit tier three is tolerable in small doses these are decks i generally can play against but if you keep seeing them in uh, round and around they they might need tier two and finally, the untiered decks are the ones that I could just play against. I don't really, they don't trigger me at all. So I put, I made that graphic with um, the tier list, kind of listing out some of the the decks, the, the main card in certain decks that you know irk me. So let's go, let's get to it. Tier one, Dark Magician. I just played against one of these right now. Um, I know Dark Magician is. It's it's some people's favorite deck, sure. There are some things you could do with Night End Sorcerer to play Synchro, sure. There's something you could do with um, Magician's Rod to get whatever you want, sure. But in the end, you're just playing Dark Magic Circle and Mag- Magician's Navigation. That's the only way this deck wins and does anything. And Quick Banish on anything you do, so there's nothing you could do about that. They cheat out two big monsters. Magician's Navigation negates stuff in the graveyard while it's hidden in there, sure. 
So very brainless stuff going on here. Unlimited banish, pretty much. Um, cheat out two monsters from the deck. I mean, can't get better than that. Really can't. Plays itself. Next up is Cyber Dragon. Cyber Dragon, another deck that just plays itself. You get your fusion quick play spell right away. Cybernetic Overflow is what really makes the deck really annoying, though. Um, they have that control component that clears out the board. Clears up back row and also monsters. And also Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon. Three hits in a turn. 6,300 attack. It's not like we needed that third one. We need we have two already. That's enough to win the game, right? No way to really beat this deck outside of your hand traps. Or using your graveyard effects because of Cybernetic Overflow. Your regular trap cards probably won't work against this deck. Next up is Cyberstein. This is definitely not a tiered deck at all. But zero skill to play. They gain life. They cheat out Ojama to Ojama on first turn is probably the worst thing ever. It's probably like tier zero in 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 this tier list of salt. They they don't give you a chance. It's not it's not something that should exist in the game. You shouldn't lose you shouldn't lose a single game against Ojama turn one Ojama King on you, right? You could also do that life cost zero and bring out two two that four thousand beaters. They have that uh roid battle roid that hits multiple times a turn. It can attack each of your monsters with piercing, I think that's what it does. And then they could also cheat out, you know, like Cyber and Dragon, anything like four thousand attack to end you, so really a no skill deck there. That's not really good. Next up is Super Heavy Samurai. Not the best deck either. They get their level 7 out easily with the Trumpet trumpet Guy. Um, or Flute Guy. I don't know what he is. Trump, the guy was blowing a horn, but he just goes to the graveyard. He comes back, and then he Synchro Summons again. Very easy to get that Ninja out. They get Soul Horns and Soul Wall, which seems to be like 70% of the time, and then they end you. Sphere Kriwa doesn't even help you here. So Kiteroid's the only thing that could save you here. The good thing about it is if you do manage to survive, they have no counterplay. You banish that card and then it's done. They they lose the game. So that's the only saving grace against Super Heavy Samurai, but the way they play is super annoying and there's no interaction at all with the opponent. My last tier one deck is Luna Light. Crimson Fox is busted. Two very good graveyard effects. Turning them to zero. Super easy OTKs. Uh the uh, cat dancer can't be destroyed. You have to use the only way to beat this deck is literally with Fortune Lady Ever. You play her in defense mode because then she's vulnerable to get beat in attack, and then you banish all their monsters, and then they sub they surrender. <laughs> it's the only way to beat Luna Light. Tier two, Shiranui. Shiranui sometimes belongs in tier one. They've been around long enough that I could withstand them though. Like they, I I get what they're about. And um, you could counter this deck. It's not they they're super strong, sure, but you could beat them. Blue eyes, blue eyes is sometimes a tier one. They trigger you a lot. They they do too much stuff to block you. They do too much stuff in the graveyard now. Back then, it was blue eyes was the weak in the graveyard deck, and red eyes was the good in the graveyard deck. Now red eyes is good in nothing now, and blue eyes is just too good in the graveyard. I'd say this is sometimes like a tier 1 deck. I don't know about this one. Stall Burn. Cancer decks will always be annoying, but Control... I get why Control exists because of Cyber Dragons and Luna Lights. They need something to slow those decks down. I just wish they were less annoying. Lava Golem really needs to get hit with something like a Limit 2, so it gets put with other Limit 2 cards or something. There's other ways to play Control. Um... We'll see some... Uh, I think Arrow Mages is a good way to play control, but... Sure. Finally, Black Wings. Black Wings are like a less, are like a less annoying Shiranui. That's how I see them now. They're, they've fallen off a bit. They can't really pack as many of those good trap cards that those decks do. But... Rakiri, the Rain Shower, is still super annoying. That's why it's in Tier 2. Tier 3, Invoked. Invoked is often one of people's like least liked decks... Um, but I give it tier three just because Invoked can be another deck. It could be a Magician Girl deck. It could. It's typically Element Saber. It's, it's going to be Element Saber 
70% of the time, but there's different variations, and I do respect, as a guy who has played Invoked decks, they require a lot of skill to play. When you're playing Element Saber Invoked, whether to use the field spell, whether to pass the next battle phase, what you're banishing from the graveyard, what what attributes are you changing in the graveyard? Uh, a lot of decisions about made to what play with the toolbox monsters. I often played Lapoya in attack mode and lost because I thought his negating spells was good enough, but not, it wasn't. That was a lack of skill costing me those games. So there's a lot of decisions to be made with Invoked. Gladiator Beast. Gladiator Beast can be really annoying now. Um, Vespasius, of course, is, is the new card that makes them a little better. They have that new counter trap card. Um, Ratiari banishes stuff in the graveyard, I found out. So they can be a little annoying. But they always have to rely on battle. That's always going to hold them back. That's what makes them more underdogs. Aramages. Aramages can be annoying now. They just keep gaining life points. They don't really give you a hold. But you can respond to them. Blow up their board with Black Rose Dragon. They are very slow to come back because they're all counter trap. I mean, they're all continuous traps. So they pretty much have to wait a turn before they could even come back. And who knows where their life points are at that point. And they're always been the free to play deck. So they've, they can't really annoy you too much for being that free to play deck. And they can't, at the same time, they can't be ever amazing just because most of their cards are free. Finally, Ritual Beasts. Ritual Beasts are a really annoying deck, but they come in small doses. People just don't play them. I don't know why, but they pretty much don't let you do anything in the game. You just keep your game in the background and go on the internet and do something else and look at your phone and then you're done with their turn. You might have lost a duel by then, but there you are. And then the untiered decks, I'm just going to talk about them a little bit. Hero decks. Old Mass Hero was super annoying, but this one's super creative. A lot of ways to win. I respect them for that. Stromberg, annoying when you can't hit them, but they simply lose when you get rid of their field spell. So do that, and they're good. Thunder Dragons, I think they will be tiered eventually. They will get trigger you if you see them enough. I haven't seen them enough to know about them too much. Dark Lords. Dark Lords were super annoying in the past, but I haven't even seen one, so that's why they're untiered now. And Monarchs. Monarchs are on my own deck right now. I can't complain about them, but I could see them being kind of annoying. They kind of do that stall thing, and then they make a million plays. Um, I don't know where they stand. So that is my KC Cup tier list of salt. If you have different opinions about this, different movers and shakers, about what triggers you in the KC Cup, please let me know. Let's get to the big news Two kind of similar things. Um, first one is the news item regarding COVID-19 and future updates. Um, this kind of depends what country you're in right now. Um, I know when I got locked out, when things got bad in New York and also in America, that was about mid-March. So we've been about one, two, three, four weeks in, sort of. Um, there were a lot of emails I've gotten from vendors, different websites you have subscriptions to, Amazon, Twitch, uh, Hulu, any store you've ever bought from, and you're on their mailing list or something. They sent you a million emails, your banks, your Bank of America, um, American Express, Citibank. You've gotten, you got a million emails, like everyone's saying, oh, we're here to help you. And whether they're actually here to help you, that's debatable, but it's more of like a PR stunt. And I was always wondering, where was Konami in this? And it didn't seem to make a lot of sense that Konami was just keeping COVID-19 undressed. And it seemed, it actually did make sense when I found out that Japan on, on Tuesday or... Someday last week, Japan reached its highest um, amount of cases of COVID-19. It's just that COVID-19 wasn't a big deal in Japan. And they are going to start shutting down and preparing for COVID-19, as many countries in the world have done. So it seems like this is more of like a world perspective, but it doesn't seem to be a catastrophe unless it hits you in the face. 
and that's kind of what happened here. We didn't hear anything about it from Konami. And what it is, is they've sent this thing, upcoming events and updates may be delayed, including upcoming events planned for this April. So the upcoming news, which was discussed, tag duel, well, tag duel is happening. They said that dual quest, memories of a friend, mission circuit, duels, chronicles, five Ds. Those things may be um, delayed or on hold. I don't know. And, you know, um, it would be easy if they had done it already and they just push a button from home and they'd do it. But we don't know what it's like. I know from America, the work from home thing was a huge learning curve. Some companies, if you're working for a um, like a legit private company, they they do work from home pretty easily. Government agencies typically do it really well. Where I'm at, where I'm at for example, it took there were some mistakes to get into the internet, and it was a little bit of a learning curve. Some IT issues with some folks, so. Um, I'm not sure how well work from home is in Japan, but from what I know from stereotypes, everyone just goes to work in Japan. They, they, um, it's part of the culture to, to work hard and stay at the office for very long times. That's a very Japanese thing from what I know. It's possible that they're really behind in any work from home policy. If that's even an issue, if that's even an option for them. So people at Konami, um, they're going to be understaffed, and it goes without saying that there may be delays to the TCG. That probably needs more hands-on things. I'm sure the the game devs at Konami, they could talk online and stuff and do stuff, but it'll be a bit of an adjustment period. All the artists and things like that, and all the people who make the merchandise, of course. So there's going to be disruptions and the good thing about Duel Links is that Duel Links is an offshoot of the TCG or OCG. So even if there are delays, we have more cards to entertain us in the meantime. We have an unlimited batch of cards to entertain us in the meantime. But the manpower behind making all these things is disrupted. And it is what it is. We've had disruptions everywhere in our lives because of this virus, and Duolink is going to be the same. It's going to be a, it's made by people, and we have to understand that this is the world we live in, and Duolink is affected. Now, going along with that, WCS 2020 is officially canceled. Um, let's go through what the official thing says: WCS and regional qualifier. Invites obtained through KC Cup September 2019, November 2019, February 2020, and April 2020 will be valid for entry in WCS 2021 and WCS 2021 regional qualifiers, respectively. Item number two. We are currently considering holding an online event in place of WCS during June to August. Talk more about those things a little bit later. Let's get to the podcast question of the week. Should Konami hold WCS 2020 digitally? Ran Harrier, longtime listener of this podcast and friend, hold something similar but don't replace the actual invites people earned. Cypher says they are looking into it. I don't see issues with doing them. If Bushiroad can do it for Card Fight Vanguard. The L Game says, can everyone gif a do it? Make Konami see the ways of online championships. Hard Game Penguin says, I don't think it can be done, and it won't be the same, are mutually exclusive. Well, that reminds me, this was a poll. Let me pull up my poll. It sounds wrong, pull up my poll. Anyways, this was a vote. Uh, let me see, I've tweeted a lot this week. 51% of people said, yes, it can be done online. 16% said, no, the cheating will be rampant. And 33% said, no, it won't be the same. So that's what those choices that Penguin was talking about. I would like to see it, and they have months to prepare. I would love to see the TCG go full of reins, and that it's a completely digital venture. That way, that would be the way to put that in place. Pro Benchwarmer says, I voted yes, but with strict monitoring. Pro Benchwarmer, of course, is Chainlink Podcast. Check them out. 
Two Defiant says yes because of coronavirus. It's Bradis HD, who is the, the main scoop guy in Duel Links. He gets us all of the data mined news. I don't think they should. Part of the spectacle of Worlds is the stage, the crowd cheers, etc. There's also a huge logistical issue in that at Worlds, they play on a special dev build of the game designed for, just for these events. No deck edits, different character selections, etc. Not saying someone would cheat, but it would cause some issues that would that just wouldn't happen locally, as well as potential connection loss in duels and would ruin the experience for viewers and people involved. Otherwise, it just becomes another MCS. Despite how people feel about the world's format for Duel Links, it's just a completely different beast. This concludes my TED Talk. Uh, Jay DeSosa08 says, Yes, it can. We have MCS Duel Links meta every month. If he can do it, Konami can also. It seems like the community does want something to happen. But some people do want the WCS to be held online. Others say no. Um, and it seems Konami is heading towards that direction. And that they're trying to hold a substitute event that isn't the WCS 2020. But some other tournament online from June to August, they say. So that's a really long period of time. But um, yes, in some... How I feel about it is, you know, what they're doing. They're, they should have something. Um, the problem, so they're holding off those, let's see, September 2020, September 2019, November 2019, February 2020, April 20. Those will be valid for entry in WCS 2021. The problem is holding everyone's interest till then. How many of these players will still be playing Duel Links next year? I don't know. I don't know if I'll be playing Duel Links next year. Um, I think I'm one of the regional qualifiers for September, I think. September and November, I got I got one of those. So hopefully I'll still be good for that. But it's kind of maintaining everyone's interest, being a game. Everyone moves on to different things. If someone moves on in life, they might not have time for it anymore. And it's holding that, holding that interest of everyone and keeping that for WCS 2020. So we don't know how well that is maintained for everyone and also life responsibilities as well that everyone has to hold and you know other things and then they're talking about online event i know if they held wcs 2020 completely online there will be cheating i I'm, it has happened in the past uh cheating has happened legitimately um someone got disqualified i'm not gonna say who but someone got disqualified and um you know, at home, internet connections are unstable, of course. You've been disconnected enough times from Duel Links to know that someone could be on the losing end and then they their router gets messed up or something, you know. There could be stream viewing, of course. That's a common, common uh, streaming tournament thing. But, you know, even... I feel like um, a lot of online games, their tournaments are held online, of course. I don't know that the standards that they need, but... Um, I'm sure the monitoring isn't as strict as it can be. And Brad is right. It's a part of the thing is being a live event, having everyone participate in the esport together as a whole thing. They get to tour whatever. I should know it would have been in Minnesota this year, so we wouldn't have had to tour Japan. But um, well, that's that's interesting too. The one in Germany didn't happen, and the one in America didn't happen either. So. The worlds have happened in Japan recently, and this and this year it's not going to happen anywhere. So, um, personally, for me, I would have. I don't know if I would have gone to Minnesota. It's 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 somewhere I, w- I would like to go at some point in my life. I guess just to check it out. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I would have gone this year, but it would have been the easiest one for me to go to. Minnesota's not that far away. Um, but then this whole thing happened, so kind of. Yeah, it took the wind out of my sails, and it is what it is. So they're holding off those invites till next year, and then the online event in place. I don't know if they could spin it in a way to make it eh, like you're dueling a virus. I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, they're going to hold some other event. I don't think it's going to be virus-related. 
Um, the only way it could apply to Yu-Gi-Oh is if it, like some kind of well, there are some virus references in Yu-Gi-Oh, but nothing, nothing too meta. It has to be kind of cyberpunky, and this coronavirus doesn't seem, except for those five G conspiracies. But you know, it seems to be something else. But that, it's a very tough situation for all. But overall, it's the right call. You know, um, NBA was the first thing really that got canceled. I think that was the first sign something was wrong. MLB is canceled. Japanese baseball is postponed. XFL was canceled. Concerts, you have had tickets to, they're getting canceled. The Olympics, I think, were canceled. So, you know, everything's canceled. And only right that this is done uh, for everyone involved, for safety of the world, whatever. Um, it had to be done. So hopefully this this online thing can capture everyone's excitement or... You know, Duel Links is going to take a hit. As long everything is taking a hit, so it's not really saying much, but um, it's happening. So no, no worlds. Now with that news out of the way, let's get to the rank duels update. Seems kind of depressing to go to um, that new item to this, but it is what it is. New cards from Ranked Duels update season 51 of Ranked Duels. SR Contaminated Earth. Trap card. If a face up level 5 or higher monster you control was destroyed by card effect this turn, special summon an earthbound immortal from your hand, deck, or graveyard. It can't attack or activate its effect this turn. So, earthbound immortals get a support card here. Pretty good to cheat out a huge monster from your deck. Um,. Conditions are pretty specific, though. It requires a level 5 or higher monster to be destroyed by card effect, and then you activate this trap. Best way to do it is with Oracle of the Sun. That card can come out for free. It's kind of like a Cyber Dragon, so they have a monster. You cheat it out. Then you can play Treacherous Trap Hole on both of them, and then you activate this trap card. It's a very conditional thing, requiring a lot of setup. Plus, you need a field spell to keep your Earthbound Immortal alive. So, this is not a... You know, it, it helps the deck, sure, but it's it might just be easier to um, normal summon the the Earthbound Immortal. But you know, this card's here if you need it. In the R category, we have a new spell called Chaos Distill. Continuous spell. Any card sent to your graveyard is banished instead. Interesting card. Um, it banished a ton of your monsters. And this is good for Chaos Necromancer, Grand Maju the Aza. Grand Maju the Aza does it already with Stromberg, since they banished 10 a turn, so that might be just the easiest way to do it. The only thing that could apply to this card is Twilight Swords. Twilight Swords come out based on how many cards you have banished. So um, you could kind of use the Light Sworn cards to mill your cards, they get banished instead, and then you could cheat out that big dragon. It's called Punishment Dragons, one of um, Blair's level up cards. But all that setup requires this face up spell. Twilight Swords are going to be worse than Light Swords. Um, it, it this this card has some uses. That I'm not saying it's useless, but it might just be easier to use the Golden Castle of Stromberg to banish ten a turn. Yeah, there are advantages and disadvantages. Castle of Stromberg takes up a field slot, which is not a spell or trap slot. And it banishes them face down, which prevents you from seeing what you banished. This one takes up a uh, spell trap zone, which clogs up your spell trap zone. And then you see what you're milling, but you have to do the milling yourself instead of doing 10 a turn. So there are pros and cons to using both cards. Now to pick a gift campaign, we're getting one new card next week. And then a second and third copy of other ones. So the second copy which we're getting is Urgent Ritual Art, Trap Card. If you control no ritual monsters, banish one ritual spell from your hand or graveyard. This card's effect becomes that card's effect. Uh, that ritual summons a monster when the card is activated. Very confusing text, but it's a trap version of a ritual spell. It helps you play around spell negations, or it lets you use the ritual spell in the graveyard. That's probably the better use of it. The first copy of this never saw any play in ritual spells. We'll see if this does anything. 
my guess is no. Uh, ritual spells aren't really great. Chaos form does it better right now. It's kind of the meta one. Vendreds exist as well. Um, Cyber angels do exist as well. And they have the Necros as well. At of Ill Omen. We're getting a third copy of this card. Level 2 Beast Flip Effect. Select a trap card from your deck and place it on the top of your deck. If Necro Valley is on the field, add the selected trap card to your hand instead. So this is Tutor Light. If you have Necro Valley, you tutor a trap card. If not, you put it on the top of your deck. I'd say this is not good enough to be a competitive card at all because it doesn't even add it to your deck. So you definitely need Necro Valley, and Necro Valley is more of a tech card that uh, cards use to lock out graveyards. So more of a farming card. Finally, the new card which we're getting on day eight, which should be next week's podcast, is Dash Dimensional Equilibrium Trap Card. When a beast monster you control is destroyed by a battle with an opponent's attacking monster and sent to the graveyard, target that monster, special summon it. And if you do, banish the attacking monster. So this turns the tide on one battle. Your beast loses a battle, and then you banish your you bring it back, and then you banish your opponent's monster. That's a pretty cool effect. But the question is, are beasts even meta? I think glider beasts can count as beast warriors, so that doesn't even work for them. Uh, let's see, dark magician has no beast, cyber dragon has no beast, cyberstein has no beast. Super Heavy are all machines. Luna Lights are Beast Warriors. Chirinoi is nothing. Blue Eyes is nothing. Uh, Stall Burn has nothing. Black Wings are Winged Beast. Invoked has nothing, I think. Glider Beasts are kind of like Beast Warriors. Aramages are Spellcasters. Ritual ritual Beasts, that could work for them, I think. Apelio is a Beast for sure. And also the Alta Apelio is a Beast. All the other ones don't really have it. I think the Ryko Lights were the Beast, so... There you go there. <laughs> not, not much else for them. So, yeah, it's, it's a good card for beast decks for sure, but also relying on a battle gang lost, which is less and less nowadays. And finally, the mission circuit is giving us another copy of Gravekeeper's Visionary. This is the second copy of this card. So it's a level 8, 2,800. You could tribute this by tributing one Gravekeeper's Monster. It gains 200 attack for each Gravekeeper's Monster in your graveyard. If this face of card in the field be destroyed, you could discard a Gravekeeper instead. So, um, one tribute, big monster, typically, it's better, it's better to use something more impactful nowadays, like Quintet Magician is something we've seen. Also, the fusion of um, Heretic, I think it's called. Supernaturalist, I mean. You see that more. This is kind of it's not worth it nowadays. It would have been really good in the old meta. I have a card that's kind of indestructible. But now you could just banish it or whatever. So, um, it's definitely something that... You could have three of these, frankly, and no one would play it still at this at this time in the meta. So... More impactful card, the Quintet Magician, 4,500, blows up the board. Makes more sense. So, that is it. Uh, upcoming news, which is <laughs> subject to change, of course. Uh, Gravekeeper's Visionary, that's here. Tag Duel Tournament. So, we're getting Wandering King, Wildwind, Gaia Drake, the Universal Force, Dual Quest, Mid-April, Memories of a Friend, New Cards and Skill, Mission Circuit, New Card Chain Close, and Duelist Chronicles 5Ds, Majestic Star Dragon. I think Duel, Duelist Chronicles 5Ds is probably the most affected. If if we do get any uh, COVID-19 delays, that's probably the one that gets most affected if they're not done with it. Hopefully they're done with it already, and we know what we're getting. They finished all the story stuff for that. Um, that would be great. If not, so be it, right? That's it for the podcast. Thank you for listening, everyone. I know it's kind of tough news to know that world is not happening, but this is the world we live in. It is what it is. Um, listen and subscribe to this podcast anywhere. Search the Dual Assessment. Find all these notes at the world, uh, the website, thedualassessment.wordpress.com. Email me with anything, thedualassessment at gmail.com. 
and Twitter, dual underscore assessment, my own account at Green Ranger CCG. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone, and I'll see you next time. Stay safe.